All right, you're listening to I Hate Radio, where the hate is spelled with an eight. Uh, That is the song right there that got me hooked. It could be called Mr. Crabgrass Encounters a Secondhand Vanity. I think it might be Mr. Capgrass Encounters a Second Vanity. Doesn't matter. The song's awesome. It got me hooked. Um, All right, well, I wrote the song, so you're going to call it what I tell you to call it. You Now you have to call it Mr. Uh, uh, Crabgrass. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Capgrass. I think that's how you say it. Will Wood and the Tape Worms. And I'm honored right now to actually be talking to the man, the myth, the legend right now. Will Wood, how's it going? Uh, it's doing all right, you know, being a man, a myth, and a legend. How about you? I'm alive. I woke up. We're all right. <laughs> okay, so that sounds like two pretty significant problems. If there's anything I can do to help you with those things, let me know. You already did, man. Music. Music is uh, definitely the factor. As you may already know, I'm I'm a big fan. And when you're a really big fan, it's kind of you know, it's a little intimidating, just a little bit, uh, to do an interview. I mean, I've interviewed a lot of people, a lot of big names, and to me, interviewing one of my favorites is, I mean, you're kind of like my Elvis, you know what I mean? So. Uh, I mean, I'm a hunk of hunk burning love? Yes, exactly. Yes, you got it. No, I mean, you're, you're like uh, my Beatles, uh, you know, a really big name. You're my Michael Jackson, without all the uh, controversy. Mm, right, without. <laughs> yes, yes, without. But I, I feel like you've really caught on. I feel like a, a lot of people, to them, you might be their Elvis or, or their Beatles or Michael Jackson without the controversy as well. Uh, it looks like you got a lot of a lot of fans going out and doing what you do, painting their face like you, uh, going out to the uh, shows. And I even see that they're doing artwork. Uh, you got some kind of contest going on or something? Yeah, uh, one of the um, uh, fan accounts that I found popping up on Facebook recently, uh, they launched a a fan art contest, uh, and uh, I got in touch with them, and I said, hey, if you uh, you want, uh, I'll give uh, tickets to the winner of this contest, uh, tickets to my uh, upcoming show on August 11th, The Real Will Wood and the Tape Worms Concert Film and Live Album Recording Event at Rocks and Dukes. it's uh, going to be a huge show. I mean, uh, VIP package is already sold out in a matter of days. And then uh, there was um, uh, still just a few uh, general admission tickets left. And uh, it's it's blowing my mind, um, the size of this show. I mean, like, we're talking like a nine-piece band and uh, a trapeze quartet, you know, uh, backing vocalist, torn section, you know, all the work, uh, massive stage and flags and flyers. It's, it's going to be a lot. And so the winner of that contest uh, is going to be getting a free VIP pass to that one, um, which uh, should be a damn good time. Um, the uh, the Instagram handle in question is at Will Wood Fan. Pretty straightforward. I guess they got there quick and got that uh, handle secured before all the other. And uh, you find at Will Wood Fans on uh, Instagram, and you can see uh, what they got going on, all their rules and situations, regulations, whatever you say, and uh, yeah, you can you can send your art in by by the last twentieth, and uh, you'll get a you'll get a chance to win a thing. <clears throat> I mean, I've I've seen some of the artwork up there. I don't know how you're gonna pick a winner. Some really good artists sending stuff in. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh what ends up coming from it. Uh, whenever I whenever I get a piece of fan art in my inbox or uh, forwarded to me, or like I I stumble across something on Google. Um, I Google myself. You Google yourself. Everybody Googles themselves. We all pretend that we don't, but we all do it. I'm come on. Um, but uh, I, whenever I find a piece of artwork that I really like, I end up printing it out and hanging it on my wall. So like I'm always looking at this stuff and feeling like a like a cool guy. Um, it's it's really flattering. It's an honor. It's a trip. It's bizarre. Um, I used to draw fan art of stuff when I was a kid. Now, mind you, that stuff was uh, better than what I do, but um, it's it's still a trip. Um, oh, absolutely. A lot of talent out there. Um, it, it, it feels good not only to know that people really want to draw pictures of me and my band and uh, the different uh, imagery that has come out of it, but also uh, feels good to uh, um, know that there's a lot of talent in my fan base. That's really cool, too. There really is. There really is. And, yeah, it's got to feel good. I mean, it hasn't been that long since since your band's been around. 
Yeah, the um, so I mean, if you really want to want to talk about my band being around, uh, my band's been around for two months. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it's um, you know, there have been three dozen different tapeworms, uh, or quote unquote tapeworms since I started doing this thing. Um, I've been doing this thing for just about two years now. Um, uh, just played we played our first show in May of 2015, and uh. So that wasn't all that long ago, considering uh, the kind of uh, trajectory I've been uh, trying to ride here. So I'm pretty proud of that stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I'll, have, I'll have to toot my own horn on that one, which I am free to do. It is my horn, and I shall do what I please with it. <laughs> That's right. But no, I mean, two years at it, and uh, I really think that you're growing the, uh, the fan base strong, and it really comes down to the, the product, man. You're putting out a good product. The music is great. I mean, yeah, there's been, a, you know, quite a few uh, tapeworms in the mix. But then again, you're going up there and you have all these different uh, players. Of course, people are going to get sidetracked. And I mean, I, I have a band, there's four of us. And, you know, it's, it's hard to get a band practice together sometimes. Oh, God. Yeah, no, tell me about it. I've been in a lot of bands and it's hard to get people to come together. It really is. So, yeah, I was, um, you know. was, was going to say the, the show, uh, you mentioned all the uh, excitement that's going to be going on. And that is August 11th, uh, Roxy and Dukes. I'm going to be there, and I'm very, very happy and excited about it. First time I'm ever going to see you live, and it's going to be uh, just amazing, I can tell. But, like, a first-timer like me, like someone that's going out to see you the first time, I mean, uh, you mentioned some things, but is there anything I should I should know to expect, anything I should prepare for? Uh I don't want to give you anything like that. I think that's uh, that's that's like um, you know that's that's like saying, hey, meet me behind the playground at three o'clock. We're gonna fight. You got some brass knuckles, you know. Um, I I wouldn't want to arm my enemy. Um, Makes sense. You know, it's it's like it's like I don't know, selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yes. Nobody would ever do that. No one. Nobody would ever do. That. Ever. No, certainly not. No, not any. You know. Uh, major politician. Um, yes, I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to give you more information than uh, you need, and I wouldn't want to give you any information that would allow you to be prepared or allow you to be able to uh, defend yourself once uh, uh, it, the proverbial fan is hit. Um, there, uh, um, it's not going to be anything that you've seen before. I can promise you that. Um, so I could tell you all about. I could tell you what to expect, but it's not going to. It's not going to, you know, it's, it doesn't matter what they say in the papers. It's always been the same old scene. There's a new band in town, but you can't get the sound from a story in a magazine named the average team. <laughs> you, should, you should write that down. <laughs> yeah, I should. Maybe, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah. Um, well, speaking of uh, great uh, piano players, I mean, you really are fantastic at uh, your intro instrument and what you do. Um, really curious to know, I mean, how long has it been? Did you start when you were a real little kid, or how did you get started on the piano in the first place? Um, well, uh, uh, I really didn't have a choice. Um, my grandma crushed and she had an old piano, and then I had to have it. Uh, it my, my, uh, my parents, they made me play the thing. I really didn't want to. Um, and they hired this elderly Russian woman to come into my basement and mash my hands against the keys and hit me with a ruler when I screwed up. Um, and uh, I didn't like that. Um, but then uh, I had a piano staring at me from the corner of the room growing up. So eventually I just turned to it and started doing things with it. No, you really did. You did amazing. I mean, I, you know, I've had a piano sitting around, uh, you know, most of my life as well, but I, I can't pull off what you do. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely remarkable talent. And the lyrics, that's where I come in. That's one thing I actually did get good at, uh, was writing lyrics. And when I when I listen to a song and I, I just hear some really executed lyrics, I mean, I really think that the words just say it all. I don't understand what you're talking about all the time, but that's good. You leave it up to, you know, the, the one that's listening to it so they can interpret it, uh, you know, the way that they like. At least that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily ever trying to say one thing at a time anyway. Well, that's good. Yeah, I noticed. It's more like, well, I mean, you have a song that's got five titles. <laughs> well, you know, you're writing a story. You're writing a story. You've got a beginning, middle, and end. I'm not writing a story. And the story's going to write itself. 
Well, I'd just say uh, more like um, I just had the weirdest deja vu moments. Like I had a, a dream of where – not not you weren't there, I'm sorry, but the, the poster I see on the wall was there, and so was the one next to it, which is impossible because Stranger Things didn't come out until last year. But mm. I feel like this happened to me several years ago. I'm sitting here. The wall is blue. The other wall is a darker blue. Uh, the corner where the wall meets the ceiling is a big hole. It's centipedes that live there. Um, centipedes. Centipedes. Mm. I got, I got, I got big ones. Like, like not, not like the house centipede, but like the, the orange kind with the pincers. Yeah, they make great pets. Tough there's any sort of visual cue you can get to tell whether or not there's asbestos in the uh, 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 the insulation in your walls, or is that just something you'd have to like hire a professional to figure out? I would go like, professional. Does it look like anything? I would definitely go professional on that because I I, I, yeah. I live in a base and I'm desperately worried I'll contract mesothelioma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. It's uh, it's something you mentioned dreams. I actually had a dream, and you were in it. And I, I sent. I, uh, I think I sent you an awkward message about it, and you were like, "I'm not replying to this." Um, but that sounds I, like something I wouldn't reply to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and all you told me in the dream was like, "You're not doing it right." And I. I That's just, what I said. That's what you said, and I, I just haven't figured out what it was. I, I'm not doing a lot of things right, uh, that's for sure. Um, ex, my um, ex-wife, my current wife, my future wife, but yeah, that's what you said. That's what you said. Hmm. Well, um, I guess I guess uh, I'll, I'll let you know. I don't know. I I, I don't I don't know what I'd say that about, but. Uh, yeah, maybe it'll become apparent. It might. It might. Sometimes things uh, play themselves out. I don't know if you uh, have any psychic abilities or ever seen a really good psychic. Yeah, maybe you have some of those abilities. I don't know. Maybe you were taking LSD. Oh yeah, twice, two times. Yeah. One really awesome, amazing trip, and another one, I was at Denny's and. Uh, you should That's never. Already a bad story. Yeah, you should never do that. Never do that. Really late at Denny's, tripping, forgetting how to, you know, function. Yeah, that was the last time. Long time ago. Yeah. Denny's wouldn't recommend Denny's as being a good uh, trip uh, destination. Um, Freaked me out. That, 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 I'm really sorry that happened to you. I appreciate. It. I'll I'll accept your apology. High enough doses over a long enough period of time can cause drastic and permanent changes in your consciousness and the manner in which your brain functions. I think that there's a good possibility that things that people often perceive as being, quote, otherworldly or, uh, or, uh, or extrasensory uh, 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 phenomena or uh, with the, uh, abilities mm -hmm. um, can often really just be uh, uh, ascribed to um, uh, in uh, uh, a, a, a different way in, in which the uh, individual in question uh, consciousness works. There's usually a box. There's usually some kind of containment unit. There's usually some kind of uh, parameters by which uh, the mind must behave in order to function in conventional reality. But there's a possibility, perhaps, to the use of the right kind of chemicals or subjective experiences, or whether it's whether it's uh, uh, a, a, anything from a, an isolation tank to a heroic dose of psilocybin, you can kind of pierce that, sort of the veil of Maya, so to speak, uh, what uh, Hunter S. Thompson re uh, regarded as the edge once you go over, you know, only people who have gone over know where it is. Uh, and uh, perhaps there's a possibility that you can expand beyond those parameters into a new world of uh, uh, events and, and uh, perspectives that are otherwise impossible to achieve, and who knows, maybe even ability. Okay, I mean, the MK Ultra project we're all about. Back yeah. in the 50s, I mean, straight to the, even the early 70s, they were they were testing people. They were they were barraging their minds with psychedelic drugs to try and see if they could gain some kind of uh, 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 hypernatural uh, abilities from them. And, and God knows, I don't know whether or not it was possible. Then again, one could argue that Ken Kesey was a fairly supernatural force, and he had his brain fried by those uh, monsters. So you know, never know. It's like you're tapping into that 90% of your brain that they say you can't access. It's like flipping the switch on. That's that's what I'm getting from. Well, I mean, people 
people totally misunderstand that thing when they say you can only use 10% of your brain. What they're really saying is you can only use like 10% at a time because if you use any more than that, that's called a seizure. If you if all of one, if 100% of your brain were to start acting all at once, that would be a seizure. That's really a, by definition what seizures are when all parts of your brain start firing off at the same time. So that movie uh, Salt was it, or was, it, was that Lucy? One of those movies where the the chick gets the magic brain powers. Oh, that movie oh. Uh, Limitless Luke. with uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Cooper? Not Cooper. Uh, uh, whatever his name is, the handsome guy with the with the bad hair. Um, the movie where he takes the pill and uh, can see the future or whatever it is, uh, that movie would have been a lot shorter if they were uh, using some real science. It would have just been like, hey, you guys, you take this pill, use 100% of your brain, he takes it, he has a seizure at the end of the movie. Oh, yeah, I do remember that movie. Um, Bradley Cooper, that's his name, Bradley Cooper. I started thinking Anderson Cooper, and I was like, I would see any movie with Anderson Cooper, and why hasn't he broken into Hollywood? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he definitely has the look, you know? Like Anderson Cooper, I'm a big Anderson Cooper fan. Me and Coops, two peas in the pot. I love that man. I can't tell how old he is. That's why I like him. Right? He's yeah, he's awesome. definitely he's he's rocking the salt and pepper. He's been doing that since he was probably in his twenties. Yeah, I, 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 geez, Louise. <laughs> so, I mean, the real Will Wood, right there. I I think uh, some. I think some speculations out there that you're a character, but I personally don't think that you're a character like a comic book character or a cartoon character. I just think that you you have this character. I think it's the art coming out. I think that's the way that the artist brain works. Am I am I onto something? Uh, you're on drugs. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. That's what it is. Yeah, definitely uh, figured that out now. I'm doing it wrong. Well, at least I know what it is. I'm smoking the pipe backwards. And dreams can come true. Yes. Yes, they can. Well, listen, man, I'm really excited about actually uh, coming down to New Jersey. Well, I'm excited about coming to meet you and um, really want to, uh, you know, just take the time to say I appreciate you taking the time with me. Have you ever done any radio in your life? I've done this. Yeah, actually, no, I just did a radio show the other day. Not the other day, the other week. I went on uh, 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 WFMU. Uh, I uh, sat in with um, Sashu uh, for a poker show and uh, really did a bunch of bad things. I I, um, I, I, um, I I swore on the air a couple of times, and they had to, like, censor me in post, and then they couldn't, and then it was live, and then they may have uh, received a fine from the FCC on my behalf. That's amazing. But here, you could say it all you want. It doesn't really matter. Yeah? Yeah, it's it's fantastic. You want to uh, go for it? Fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, fuck, fuck, I mean, you got the seven fuck, deadly fuck, words. Fuck, you could do fuck, them all. Fuck, 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 piss, fuck, piss, fuck, motherfucker, cock, fuck, dick. I'm really, I almost said the N-word. Fuck, 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 <laughs> Yeah, fuck, I think that's uh, the eighth deadly word. You can't say that one. That that one that would get us in some trouble. I honestly I wasn't really about to. I was trying. To... <laughs> no, but I I really do appreciate it. The reason I asked if uh, if you ever did a radio before was because um, our uh, segment here is just about uh, wrapping up. Anything that you would say to uh, your crazy fans before we get out of here? Well, uh, greetings, the side page, Blaze of Dumb Avoid Group, now there's books in between. This is your boy, Whittley Wompska, coming to you live from I Hate Radio. This next song you all about to hear is called Give Me the Shovel, I'm Doing That Thing. <laughs> uh, my second <laughs> self is Bruce by Kevin on Tracy and the Dillinger Escape Plan, featuring members of Foxy Shazam, Frank I on the Celebration, lending this town to this hot piece of garbage. Uh, listen to it, and you'll enjoy it. Uh, uh, Mark Schwartz has got a music video out for this thing. Really talented filmmaker. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook. You can Google me. You can just just Google me, man. And then follow me on all the Instagrams and all those things that the kids are calling the good stuff these days. Uh, that's uh, Will Wood and the tapeworms.com, willwood.com, .com, .edu. You can uh, call me, 557-7923. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You have a good whatever time it is, and I will see you at the show. <laughs>